What if your job was to sell Edmonton? That'd be kind of fun, wouldn't it? Hey there, I'm Jackie Ray Greening, the host of The Early Days, brought to you by Proust Chown. And Tom Vinica is my special guest. And I love, I said, do I call it the Edmonton Screen Industries Office or do I call it SEO? And you said, I really don't know. That's a great question. <laughs> because it, it, you came out of the, it, it came, uh, morphed out of the Edmonton Film Commission, which everybody would recognize, but it kind of changed when they changed the the commission. So explain. Yeah. So I, um, you know, it is, it is a bit of a mouthful. Edmonton Screen Industries Office and, and uh, ESIO or SEO. And, and, you know, I think, uh, I mean, at, at our core, we are trying to sell Edmonton really, whether it's to the film industry or to the other screen industries, video games. And, uh, and so Edmonton is the thing that I, you know, the brand, I suppose, that is like the most important part of that. Um, but yeah, it came from, uh, I think originally the film commission was when, within Edmonton Economic Development, and uh, and then about five years ago or six years ago now they they created this uh, standalone entity that uh, can act as the film commission and focus on you know trying to bring production into our region, bring activity in all of the screen industries, and maybe that's part of why to uh, it is the screen industries office because they were VR, were video games, were entertainment through a screen. Ent uh, uh, yeah, entertainment content. Okay, so it's, it doesn't matter if it's a mobile or cell phones or console or PCs, that's what you're, you're trying to sell. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I, I, with, I, with, I think yeah, entertainment though is kind of the key part of that okay. as well. Okay. Yeah. Well, before we get into more of the background of what you do with, uh, in that to sell Edmonton, talk about yourself. Where were you born and raised? I was born and raised right here in Edmonton. Yeah. Very cool. Yeah. Okay. And then uh, where'd you go to school? Uh, I went to McNally for high school and mm -hmm. then I kind of lived in a bunch of different places in Millwoods and then into kind of near White Ave, you know, Mount Pleasant area. And, and uh, yeah, so a little bit all over the south part of Edmonton. What were you, what were you doing? What kind of steered you into this type of industry? Oh, dude, that doesn't happen in the early part of my life. That kind of happens all the way through. It's, uh, I mean, goodness, the path to get here is one of those, like, all over the windy place. The long place. and winding yeah. road. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, this job, I guess, uh, when I was hired, they were looking for a bunch of different, bunch of different things. Someone with, um, you know, in, uh, I guess, content creation experience, production. So I didn't come from film and TV. I came from... Uh, interactive digital media, so at a VR studio yeah. before this, and so that was um, you know a, a, an element of what they were hoping to have, uh, and then someone with investing and business background, and so my background is uh, very entrepreneurial. This is kind of the, the first real job I sp suppose uh, that I've had since Wendy's when I was in uh, high school, <laughs> but uh, and uh, anyways, and so um, you know, I, so I have this you know, I guess entrepreneurial background from a number of different industries, retail, construction, uh, trucking, uh, and tech, um, that all just kind of came together to fit some of the core parts of what I do here. And that so, really fascinates me. So yeah. when they put out the job application for this, what did it have on it that you said, oh, I can do that? Yeah, so I didn't see a job application. I got asked to apply for it, and because uh, I had there were some people that uh, that knew of me and knew or in, and and knew some of the things that they were looking for, and that you know that uh, how I might fit that, and so they asked me to apply, and then and then went through the process the with the recruiter and and uh, found it that way. So it wasn't. Uh, it's it's sort of found me, I guess, uh, as opposed to me finding it, and it was it's you know in a in a different enough. Um, I guess it's a different enough thing that I don't know if I would have found it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it needed to, to kind of find me. But. I love that. So for the Edmonton Screen Industries office, you, uh, what would a typical day be for a Tom uh, Vinica? To, you walk in and what are you doing? Um, that There's no typical, typical day. Typical day. Wow. Um, I don't know if I've ever had a typical day in any of my part of my, my career, and this one is definitely true to that. Except uh, Wendy's in high school. Yeah, Wendy's for about three months. That was typical, and that's why I, it was only three months. <laughs> Something needed to change. Um, but... Uh, yeah, I mean, I, I uh, obviously you know, have a, I have a team that uh, that I help to uh, lead and work with, 
um, you know, and, and I guess within our office, we're working as, as, you know, I guess from a film commission standpoint, we're working to support production that's here, help them uh, finding locations, helping them integrate with the city and permitting and all those uh, types of the those types of things. Um, we work to also attract production. So uh, we go out to different parts of the world and, and meet with producers um, and, uh, and studios and, and um, tell them about what we have to offer and why. Uh, and then there's a lot of work that goes into preparing uh, our city for production to come here. So, you know, similar to an airport, like you're not landing a plane without a without a runway and without some infrastructure. And a production is very similar to that. They they won't come unless there's something prepared. And so it's not just saying, hey, we've got these great locations, or you know, it's we need to have crew, we need to have um, locations that understand. Um, how film and TV works, and uh, so there's a lot of there's a lot of work that goes into preparing that, and and uh, our office you know does that as well, which is you know can be lots of different can mean lots of different things, I guess. Yeah, and I guess that might be a, a neat way to go is let's maybe go through the process of uh, how do you first hear that somebody is thinking about uh, do they put feelers out saying we're going to be shooting movies? Uh, is that how you first find out who to go after? Yeah, so I think. Um, it's, this is a really different business in the sense that, um, you know, if you go to a, a trade show with your product and you're trying to sell your product, I can say like, you know, this is our cup and you should buy it because of whatever. And I can, you know, conceivably the goal of leaving a trade show would be to like have 20,000 of those sold and, and yay, I won. Whereas in film and TV, like I can say, hey, this is Edmonton. But if they're looking for the desert, then, you know, <laughs> I, I, I can't really do that, you know. And so um, it it's, works a little bit in reverse where you're going and selling up front and showing and developing relationships so they understand you. They know that this is a place where I can go that I can rely on. And I believe it because I've seen other production there. Um, and these are the looks that I can achieve there. And then um, when that comes, they think of us. Uh, as opposed to you know going and saying can, what do we get today like well, how can we how can we convince you to spend your money today here like because they don't have a story for Edmonton necessarily maybe sometimes you can be lucky that way and then yeah I, I do have something I want to think about over there but usually it's developing relationships and then them thinking hey I I you know we liked working in Alberta and here are the looks and Edmonton has this look so we'll go there. And, yeah. Okay, and and uh, I noticed when I went to the ESIO website is that you do have location pictures there. Yes. So anybody, if they're looking, yeah. So anybody can find us that way. Sometimes that's the way they do find us. Sometimes they're they're looking around. Um, I mean, a show like The Last of Us, which is a huge production that just mm-hmm. happened here, demonstrated a ton of what Alberta looks like as a whole, and including Edmonton, and uh, and so that you know that kind of spurs on more interest in our region because they understand what we have to offer um, and you know and what and and also understand the type of production that we can accomplish here so oh yeah well yeah what well, who would have thought is zombies right. <laughs> would, would make yeah. us put Edmonton on the map really is that what happened so now okay let's now you you've secured that the uh, last of us they've said okay we are coming to Alberta we are coming to Edmonton specifically so you said there's a lot of runway you've got to you set up before they even get here so talk about some of that what you guys did yeah, so there's um, we're working with the production and and scouting and help them uh, whether it's supporting their scouting. They have their own folks that come and do the scouting, but we can kind of guide them around. We're the ones who know our city the best, obviously, so we um, we can help with that. Um, we can point them towards resources, film related resources that are in our city. Uh, there's prep work too in advance. You know, even things like the tax credit. The, that's a big part of. You know, incentives, uh, government incentives, uh, that's a big part of why they would come to our region or, or how they compare regions. And so that's work too, like working with governments in advance to ensure that those are stable, that they're predictable, that they are competitive. Um, and so, yeah, there's all of those components um, that, would, that, would, uh, that we would be working on 
you know, before they come, once they're committed to coming, then it's a little bit more hands-on, like, you know, what are you looking for? You need a scene, you know, say for The Last of Us, they're looking for, um, you know, the uh, the parliament building, obviously, or not parliament building, sorry, the, the legislature, <laughs> you know, wrong, wrong city. Um, the uh, legislature, um, you know, that's, you know, are doubling as the capitol building, you know, so that mm-hmm. like, we can, yeah, let's go take show them that and help them, uh, you know, make the necessary... Uh, um, things happen to be able to get a location like that in conjunction also with the Alberta uh, Film Commission as well who you know uh, is, was a big player and part of that as well. So uh, let's there's got to be a trickle down to it uh, for a casting call then and other things like that that really help out a city I would imagine. Yeah. Your economic spin-offs got to be there. Yeah so there's I mean there's um, there's there's the uh, you know, the, this huge production descends on your region and there's all of the spend that happens directly because of those people that are there um, and uh, the businesses that are you know, used for locations, the compensation that goes to them. I mean, there's all this money, but then there's also this activity uh, and interest that's generated by it. And you know, nobody could go near downtown without seeing some of those sets and being excited by it. Um, and that generated a ton of interest in the industry and people who maybe never thought that that's a path for me here are thinking, hey, I should try that out. And we did see that. We saw huge influxes of people. Um, you know, some of our other local productions were doing casting calls and had thousands and thousands of, of uh, people apply um, to be part of the industry. And that's just, that's really exciting and cool. And don't you really need that in a city? You need producers, you need people wanting to do things here right. because that makes other things happen. Yes, yes. I mean, at the end of the day, we can rely on and hope that, you know, HBO comes here or go, you know, try to attract them. Um, but... Uh, you know, it will make a really big difference for us is to have people producing content here and realizing that they can do it, seeing a path, understanding, you know, h- how to do that, having the resources around them to be able to do that. And, and the nice thing about that service production or production that we do for, you know, like a Hollywood studio that, that is done here um, is that it helps us to build the infrastructure uh, and then our own uh, content producers can take advantage of that, to, you know, the talent that's here, uh, that's been developed, you know, by practicing and, and working on these uh, sets um, and, and then produce their own content and really drive that local, you know, that local business and opportunity. And almost you got to think when you have a success of an HBO Last Last of Us, you got to go. Okay, how do we find another one that big? That's yeah. Gonna, that's gonna, yeah, yeah. The bar is a little. The high bar is now. a little like, high. Holy mackerel! Um, yeah, and, and that's uh, yeah. So we we do want to try uh, to do that, but I mean, for us in Edmonton, you know, like any business, you don't just suddenly go from you know a small business to like a multinational. You know, it takes time to build into that and. Um, the nice thing about Alberta right now is that we are capable of doing those big, big, big things. Um, in Edmonton specifically, there is more work. There's, there's some steps in between for us to like totally achieve that on our own. Calgary was, you know, the kind of the, the center of a lot of that activity and, and, and the attraction of that, the infrastructure that they have there. Um, but we have some steps to do before we can, um, you know, on our own attract that type of production um, and so we're building a business you know we're, we're trying to um, you know develop that crew base the you know the the talent base uh, we're trying to develop the other infrastructure that's there and, and you know and that takes time you gotta you gotta get a little bit more revenue a little more activity and then you gotta you know fill in and then you got a little bit more and you kind of you do that over time and so it's the less glamorous part of you know any business you know that's the just the the work that goes and then you see these big productions come in and it makes everyone excited and we and we love that want that but there's lots of lots of work to do still yeah and because it's kind of young when you think about you know, it as it more from the Edmonton Film Commission into this and you said it was five or six years ago that it did change the biggest mindset would be are you guys more thinking it more entrepreneurially than with uh, w- with the g- being city run? You were more bureaucratic, so now it's more people in the industry. Would that be close? Yeah, I don't know if I can. I mean, I, I don't want to. I, I can't really accurately comment on necessarily yeah. how it was before um, or meaningfully comment on that. But I certainly I do think that one of the advantages that we have of being our own unit is that we are able to be more dynamic that way and entrepreneurial. Yeah. Um, and, uh, um, and kind of, you know, we have 
resources that are allocated allocated to us and we can deploy them in the way that we think is the best for this industry as opposed to having you know being competitive with other types of you know industries with you know that, that within a, a bigger organization so, so to speak and so I think whether that's a government or non-government you know I think we also being arm's length we're funded by the government we certainly have you know we are we are the face of Edmonton within these screen industries and so we have a responsibility to to, to do uh, or to act in a, you know, in a certain way. But we have, the, we have I think, again, a little bit more agility uh, by being the type of organization that we are within that. And we can try different things and, and, and uh, maybe attract, a, you know, or have a, a more entrepreneurial culture and all those types of pieces with, you know, in this kind of contained group that we have. Yeah, because the, the people you would work with, with that are doing maybe a TV or film, they have that kind of same mindset too, don't they? So yeah. you're speaking to each other, which let's go from the TV and film and talk more about the, the interactive digital media component of what the ESIO does. Mm -hmm. How does that all play out? Yeah, so the, the interactive side is a, is a, is a pretty different business than film and TV. Film and TV definitely relies on a film commission. Like a film commission is a, is a key part. It's like I said before, it's kind of like the runway or the airport. Like it needs to be there for some, for, for people to come in um, and, and kind of connect into our world. Whereas with interactive digital media, it's much more um, small business stimulation. And uh, these are, there's, it's a different, it's just a, a really different um, world. They're still creating content, and they experience a lot of similar, unique problems or challenges. Um, and uh, but it it's more it's yeah it's just different. So in that side, we're much more focused on um, ways that we can address the unique needs of content development. Which investment is a is a um, you know. So I, I used to have a, a digital media business or interactive digital media business. A VR business, and it uh, it had um, an entertainment side, and then it had a kind of more traditional um, corporate uh, side. And the corporate side fit into the tech world really cleanly, and we could raise money, you know, in that world. But then on the entertainment side, it's there's there's just much more dynamic risk. I mean, when you can create something, you can spend a million dollars creating a game, and then and then no one likes it because preferences changed mid, you know, midway, or Ouch. you never thought about it. You know, like there's, those are risks that investors that invest in tech, just they don't, they don't mix. And so there's unique things that we try to help with those, um, with those help those companies overcome, help them um, uh, commercialize their art and their, and their, their uh, creativity. Um, and, yeah, so that's and, and create community. A lot of this, I think, is about creating a, a, a creative community mm -hmm. that um, kind of feeds off of uh, itself, and uh, um, yeah, and kind of and stimulates more creativity. Yeah, and and is there is there a local success story in relation to to that to the games industry to the digital games? Yeah, so I mean, Bioware is a is a world. Okay, that's pretty big. Yeah, very big. Yeah, <laughs> very big, world renowned. And uh, you know some of the biggest titles, like recognize titles that are recognizable around the world. Star Wars. I mean, goodness, like these are big, big IPs. Wow. Um, Star Wars and, and uh, many others. And so, like um, the and then there's also from that. So that's you know that dates back thirty or or forty years into the nineties. How, how old are we now? <laughs> anyway, <laughs> but the uh, so that uh, but uh, from that too has, has come many other games, uh, inflection games, uh, today is, is, uh, a studio that's run by, you know, folks that kind of grew up in that other, that other system and, uh, uh, or, or learned through that system of Bioware as well as Beamdog and, and, uh, there's others. And so, um, yeah, we have a big success story here in town. Um, and, and then many success stories, uh, coming, emerging out of that. How many staff do you have at ESIO? Uh, so we are six people right now. Mighty six people. Yeah. When when you started, uh, what two and a half years ago? How many were there? Uh, similar number, five or six. We were kind okay. of in that. That's kind of our range, I think. Uh, and but, I would think you would have to have a wide range of talent that because you'd all have to bring different strengths to something as varied as what you are doing at that office. Yeah. So we have um, right now. Our, I, 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 mean, I guess I would call it my ideal team is to have someone that's really focused on the game side and then someone who's focused mm -hmm. on the film and TV side being a film commissioner um, and uh, experts in those in those areas um, and uh, not just experts in those areas but experts in developing 
or like ec economic economic activity. It's not, um, you know, it's interesting. This has been a real learning experience for me in this role. Is um, business development, economic development are different things, and there's different skill sets that matter. Um, there's lots of things that overlap, and lots of things that you know tools. I you know obviously being an entrepreneur my whole life. Uh, business develop is, development is kind of one of my things, um, and economic development is a slightly different mentality, and you have to think differently and bigger. And uh, it's really easy, I think, for folks often to say, um, you know, you want like your industry expert. Um, so I'll use another example of politicians. I mean, uh, so often we hear that, uh, or I've heard anyways, people say, well, wouldn't a business person be the best person to be a politician? And I uh, probably have said that myself a few times, being an entrepreneur and maybe a little biased towards that you know, <laughs> kind of frame of mind, um, and then coming here and realizing there's totally different talents and, and sets of skills for whether it's in politics or whether it's in ec dev or in other elements. And so there are, you know, expertise in the industry is certainly valuable and important, but um, understanding how to move an industry is actually what we're doing here. I don't need you to know how to develop a game. I don't need you to know how to make a film either. But what we do need to know is how to create an industry and move like these large stakeholders and align them into a way that, that creates an environment for the entrepreneurs to, to flourish. Yeah. That awesome. is, and, and, and actually that's why I loved your, your website because the SIO really describes that. It goes from either the funding to the shooting locations to uh, all the different things that you can do because it is varied, but it all narrows down. Is that like we started at the beginning of the show? You're selling Edmonton. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, so it's, I mean, that, uh, again, that just kinda, that's a, it's a different mentality than I think um, the, that, that often people yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a different skill set that is not immediately obvious, I guess. And the things that make that person skilled is not necessarily immediately obvious. And it's been, it's, that's been an interesting process for me is like dialing in, what is it that I really need to accomplish these goals? And, uh, and I'm, I love our team. I'm really excited about who we have to do that. And uh, I think they are very skilled at those things, understand how to make that happen and, uh, and have the, the underlying skill set that that'll, gives them the power to do so. Well, and I think it's awesome that a born and raised Edmontonian mm -hmm. is the guy that is selling our city. So we're in very good hands. Thank you so much for uh, hanging with us and uh, best of luck bringing more attractions into our city because as you know, anything that's happening and making things happen in this city makes it a stronger city. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I mean, we are very excited and we, and we do have an, an awesome city, an amazing city with tons to offer. And it is fun to go out there and sell, uh, you know, sell my hometown and, and uh, get people to come. Thanks for joining us. This has been The Early Days, brought to you by Proust Chown. This series is proudly produced by the team at Road 55. Road 55 creates content that connects. For more information, check our website, www.road55.ca.